and welcome to this Learn English Elementary recording brought to you by the British Council. To find out more and to access language activities and audio scripts, visit our Learn English website at www.britishcouncil.org forward slash learn English. Hello again. Welcome back to the Learn English Elementary podcast, Series 2, Episode 9. Hello. We're your presenters. He's Ravi and I'm Tess. Si. Yo soy Ravi. Vivo en Londres. Um. Ah, hablas español, Ravi? Bueno. ¿Cómo estás? Um, um, I, I didn't know you spoke Spanish, Tess. Mm, solo un poquito. OK, you can stop now. Have you been taking Spanish lessons? Yeah, I have. You know, going to Barcelona and everything. I thought I'd have some lessons to help me when I get there, but, well... What? I think I might stop going to the lessons. Oh, dear. Why? Oh, I don't know. I just don't think I'm getting any better. How many lessons have you had? Three. Oh, come on, Ravi. Three isn't many. I know, I know. And, of course, it's difficult at first, but don't give up. You really should give it longer than three lessons. It's just that, well, everyone is better than me. I feel really stupid sometimes. Mm. What's your teacher like? She's great. Well, why don't you talk to her about it? I'm sure she'll understand. Well, she doesn't understand anything I say in Spanish. But, yeah, you're right. And just think how good it'll be in Barcelona when you can do things in Spanish. Ordering meals, buying postcards... Talking to girls. <laughs> well, two or three more lessons won't hurt, will they? Mm. OK, I'll talk to the teacher and I'll carry on going to the lessons, OK? Good. Now, shall we start the podcast? What have we got today? We've got all the usual things. Your turn is about time machines. Carolina and Jamie are at a restaurant. Abby's going to do the quiz. But first of all, we've got... I'd like to talk about. And we've got Pete here in the studio. Hi, Pete. Hi. I'd like to talk about is the part of the podcast when a guest tells us about something that's important to them. It could be anything at all. A hobby, a person, a place, a thing. Whatever you want. We've had loads of interesting topics. Chocolate, fell running, Einstein, bath. And today, Pete is with us. Where are you from, Pete? From Birmingham. OK. And what do you do? I'm a student. I'm studying design. And what are you going to tell us about? I'd like to talk about this watch. OK, listeners, because you can't see it, I'll describe the watch that Pete has here. It's a wristwatch. I'd say it's quite old. Mm, it's nearly 60 years old. It's got a leather strap. The face of the watch is white. Well, <laughs> it was white, as I say. It's quite old. And it isn't telling the right time. Why is this watch special, Pete? It was my grandfather's watch. He came to England more than 50 years ago, and this is the watch he was wearing when he arrived here. Where did he come from? From Hungary. To Birmingham? <laughs> Not at first. He was in Dover for a while. He met my grandma in Dover, and they moved to Birmingham a couple of years later. When he came over here, he didn't have much. Just a few pounds in his pocket, you know. But this watch was a present to him from his grandfather, his 21st birthday present. So it was really special to him, and now it's special to me. Hmm. Is it very valuable? I mean, I know you don't want to sell it or anything, but is it worth a lot of money? No, not at all. It doesn't even tell the right time. It's just an ordinary watch. But it's special to me because it really reminds me of my granddad. Aww. I remember when I was really small, I used to sit on my granddad's knee and play with his watch. And he used to let me wind it up. You have to wind it up? It hasn't got a battery? Yeah, it's clockwork, yeah. You wind it up there with that winder. Mm -hmm. You have to do it every day. I don't do it usually now because it's so old. In fact, I don't really wear this watch very often. But it's important to me as a kind of heirloom, you know, something to give to my children when I have them. <laughs> Is your granddad still alive? No, he isn't. He died two years ago. 
He left the watch to me in his will. He always said he was going to leave it to me, and he did. Mm. I really like that I have a connection to Hungary, where my granddad came from. Have you ever been to Hungary? No, I haven't. I'd like to go though. I'd really like to see the place where my granddad used to live and all of that. The name of the shop where he bought this watch is on the back too. Look. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wonder if the shop is still there. That would be great. If he took the watch back to the shop after sixty years and asked them to fix it. I think the guarantee might have run out by now. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd have to pay to have it fixed. <laughs> yes, I think it might. Okay then, Pete. We'll take a photo of your watch to put up on the website if that's okay. That's fine. And thanks for coming in to talk about it. My pleasure. Thanks. If you're listening and there's a special object you'd like to tell people about, you can write about it and send a picture or recording to us at learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil dot org. That's Learn English podcast, all one word, at British Council, all one word. dot org. That's O R G. If we like it, we'll put it up on the site. Have you got any old things like that from your family, Tess? Um, I've got a necklace that used to be my grandma's. That's quite old. I don't really wear it very often. How about you? No, not really. Next time I go to visit my grandparents, I might just ask them if they've got anything. You know, interesting. Oh, Ravi, you're terrible. Oh. Right then, let's move on to the quiz. Who's playing today? It should be Abby. Hello, Abby. Hi, Ravi. <coughs> Hi, Abby. Hi, Tess. Where are you calling from, Abby? From Manchester. <coughs> Sorry. Another Mancunian like me. Great. Have you got hiccups, Abby? Yes, sorry. <gasps> <laughs> That's okay. Do you want to go in? Boo! <gasps> What are you doing, Ravi? <laughs> Listen, Abby. Do you want to go and get a glass of water? Or we'll wait for you. Okay, thanks. <gasps> I'll be back in a minute. Okay, go on. What was that about? Well, I thought when someone had hiccups, you gave them a big shock like that. I think a glass of water is a bit better, really. There are lots of ways, though. Actually, maybe that's an idea for your turn. How do you cure? Hello. Hi, Abby. Have they gone? Yes, I think so. Sorry about that. That's okay. Where were we? Manchester. What do you do in Manchester, Abby? I work in a nursery, looking after children. Ah, how old are the children? Well, the oldest ones are four, and the youngest ones are tiny. <laughs> I work with the three and four-year-olds mostly. Do you like it? I can't think of anything worse than having lots of three-year-olds running around all day. I love it. The kids are really lovely. It's great. That's good then. It's always good if you enjoy your work, just like me and Tess. <laughs> okay then, Abby. Are you ready to play hot seat? Okay then. You know what to do. I've got these cards, and I'm going to give them to Tess, and she'll explain the words to you. They're all on the same topic, and Tess has to explain them without saying the word on the card. Okay? Okay. And we'll see how many you can guess in a minute. Are you ready? Think so. Okay. Here are the cards, Tess, <laughs> and the topic today is means of transport. Ah, that's an easy one. No, it isn't. You've got one minute, starting from now. Uh, right. Um, it's got two wheels and an engine. Uh, motorbike. Yes. Next one. Ah,、uh, it flies, but it hasn't got wings. Aeroplane. No, it hasn't got wings. Um, it goes round and round. Um, the thing goes round and round like this. Ah. Helicopter? Yes. Okay. Uh. Oh, a big thing. Um. Lots of people sit in it. Train? No, on the road. Um. With a driver, four wheels,、uh, double decker. Bus? Okay. Oh.、Uh, this one's got two wheels but no engine. Um. You pedal. Bike. Bicycle. Yes. Um. This one flies and it has got wings. 
plane? Yes. Right. Uh, it's a car and you uh, pay the driver to take you where you want to go. Taxi? Yes. Um, this one's a ship. Um, the cars can go on it sometimes. Uh, it goes backwards and forwards between two places. Uh, a ferry? That's right. OK. Oh, oh, oh the one we said before. Um, big thing, lots of people. Um, it runs on rails. Train? Yes. Uh, this one's like a train, but in the city. It's um, electric and it runs on rails in the city centre. A bit like a bus, but on rails. Tram? Oh, yes. <laughs> OK, I'll let you have that one. Well done, you two. That was pretty good. How many was that? A uh, motorbike? Helicopter? I like the way you tried to show Abby what a helicopter does with your hands, Tess. Well, it's difficult to describe. I know, I know, but on the phone? <sighs> Just teasing you. Motorbike? Helicopter? Bus? Bicycle? Aeroplane? Taxi? Ferry? Train, tram, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine! Well done! That's a record, I think. <laughs> well done, Abby. We'll send you something for playing. Thanks, Tess. Well done to you, too. Yeah, well done, Abby. See ya. Bye! I told you it was an easy one. No, we were just very good at it. Have you ever had nine right answers? Moving on, uh, we've got your turn, Carolina, and my joke after this. I've had a great idea for a joke to tell, Tess. Ah, I can't wait. Before we enjoy Ravi's joke, though, we've got your turn. This is the part of the podcast when we hear what people think about a question we ask them. A different topic each time, and we always get some interesting answers. This time, the question we asked was, If you had a time machine, what time would you visit, and why? Let's hear what people said. For fun, I go back to the 80s, because uh, I'm totally addicted to that kind of fashion, and, uh, of course, I'd like to meet... Uh, um, Vivian Westwood at the beginning of her career with Sex Pistols and other people like that. Um, I think I'd like to go back to the olden days, like the 16th or 17th century, but I'd have to be a rich person living in a, in a castle with lots of people to make the fires and cook my food and wash and dress me and things like that. If I had a time machine, I would like to visit... Um, the, my childhood when I was uh, three years old because my father passed away when I was four and I don't really remember how my father looks like and uh, I have only like five pieces of memory of him so I would really like to go back in time and to get to know him better and to uh, have a fatherly love from him I think I would like to go back to the time of Tang Dynasty in China because I read so much about this era, the richness of their poetry and their art and the way of life. So I would really like to go back to the era to talk to the people in those times, talk to the uh, famous poet such as Li Bai and even meet the founder of that great dynasty. Uh, there's so much to learn about this culture. Um, yeah, that, that is really the time I'd like to go back to. If I had a time machine, I would like to go forward in the future, maybe to the year 3000, see what life was like, how we'd advanced, what our technology, um, how we travelled, what kind of strange transportation we'd have found, um, and how healthy we were and what the world looked like at that time. Interesting. What do you think, Tess? The 1960s, probably. Great music, great clothes, and I could see what my parents were doing. It'd be like that film. Oh, what do you call it? Back to the Future. Yeah. Yeah. I'd go to the future, actually. See if it's like it is in the films. Anyway, listeners, if you want to write or record where you'd like to go in a time machine, you can send it to us at the usual email address. Now it's time to see what's happening with Carolina. 
If you've listened before, you'll know that Carolina is a student who's come from Venezuela to study at Newcastle University.